Welcome to another great episode here at the Pastor's Pantry Cooking School. I'm your host, Chef Sam Peters. Good to have you with us for an Italian class this time. Listen, if you're looking for a way to really elevate your Italian game instead of that usual, you know, spaghetti and meatballs or worse yet, just spaghetti with sauce, we've got a great recipe for you. We're doing penne carbonara uh, this class, so you're going you're gonna to love it. Uh, before I get into that, though, I want to share with you, as I do every episode, the gospel of good taste. These are the two principles that Joyce and I are very, very passionate about. The first is that we believe everything is about stewardship. James 1.17 tells us that every good and perfect gift is given to us by God, and food is a wonderful gift. So we want to try to teach you some things about food that will help you make every dining experience great at your house. The second thing we're passionate about is community. We're passionate about it because Jesus is passionate about it. And everywhere he went, he was constantly building relationships with people across the dining room table. Uh, there's all of these great food stories throughout the Gospels. And what we want to try to do is to teach you some things about food that will help make the dining experience at your table the sacred place and the sacred time it was already meant to be. Uh, in fact, we, we believe that food is just a perfect metaphor for community. So we hope you'll take these recipes and try them out. Well, as I said, we're making penne carbonara, and uh, we're going to go over the ingredients. Joyce will read those to you, and then I'll show you how we're going to make it here in just a minute. All right, this is going to serve 12. You need nine eggs lightly beaten, four cups of heavy cream, two cups of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Don't buy the stuff in the shaker. Get the triangle and grate it yourself. You need two 16-ounce packages of penne pasta, one and a half tablespoons and two teaspoons of olive oil, one onion chopped, one and a quarter pound diced pancetta, one and a quarter teaspoons of ground nutmeg, one and a quarter cup pine nuts toasted, one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, one and a half cups and three tablespoons of chopped Italian flat leaf parsley, not the curly parsley, and one and a half cups of freshly grated Parmesan, and that's to top it all off with. All right, let's get into making our penne carbonara. We want to start off, as Joyce said, we have a bunch of eggs in here that we've already lightly beaten. To that, we're going to add our heavy cream. So I've got a quart, and we're making a lot here today. So I have a quarter, four cups of heavy cream. And then we have one and a half cups of real Parmigiano Reggiano. And then all I want to do is just sort of mix that together. Get that cheese incorporated in there. And then we're going to set this aside while we do a little cooking and a little boiling. You want to get a nice uh, pot of salted water boiling and get it ready for our pasta. What I like to do is go ahead and get that started cooking right about the time that we start making this carbonara. It'll all get done about the same time. All right, now it's time for us to go ahead and cook up some vegetables and our pancetta. So I have a big skillet or wok here that we want to get nice and hot. We're going to saute some onions. I'm going to put a little olive oil in the bottom of the pan. Get all of our onions added in here. And we just want to saute these for just a couple of minutes just till they get nice and softened. Joyce is putting our penne in our boiling water behind me. Ah, we're starting to get a little sizzle there. That's good. And all we want to do is to cook these onions so they just get translucent. And we're going to take those back out uh, to a small bowl and we're going to cook up our pancetta. So the pancetta, we find it already diced, and pancetta, if you're not familiar with that, is uh, it's basically like an Italian ham. Okay, what am I looking at here? Flip it, it's upside down. Flip it, it's upside down, okay. Uh, but pancetta is uh, really, uh, this is actually prosciutto. <laughs> so uh, we're going to dice up, we're going to cook prosciutto instead of pancetta, apparently. So uh, we must have grabbed the wrong thing at the store. But it looks about the same in the package. It's an easy mistake to make. So we're going to cook up some prosciutto. 
the, dif the difference is the prosciutto is maybe a little bit saltier, okay, than the pancetta. But uh, you can pick that up and you want it diced, and so we actually buy it already diced. All right, our onions are translucent. We're going to go ahead and remove this to a bowl temporarily. To our hot skillet, we're going to add our prosciutto. That might be pancetta. It might be pancetta. Could be. Could they, they could have been mixed together. I could have just picked up one in the wrong package. It happened the other day. It's they put things on the same shelf. Yeah, you know? it's either pancetta or prosciutto. So, it's a mystery. They can be interchangeable here. I'm okay with that. Right. All right, I'm going to turn my heat down just a little bit. To that, we're going to add a little bit of nutmeg. About a quarter teaspoon. We're just trying to get this a little crispy. All right, now we're going to add our onion back in. along with some toasted pine nuts. We just toasted those in a dry skillet over low heat. Talk, just kind of stir them around, toss them around a lot. You don't want them to burn, they get bitter. And then we're gonna season this with a little bit of salt. You don't need too much salt because the prosciutto or pancetta, whatever we have, it's already got salt in it, okay? Listen, sometimes you buy stuff and you just got to make what you got, right? So, it's all good. It's going to be all right. It's going to taste fantastic either way. It's still meat, which makes it still carbonara. All right, now I'm going to turn my heat down a little bit more. Because now we're going to add in that cream and egg and cheese mixture that we made earlier. Just slowly. We don't want to scramble it up. We're just trying to heat it through. Mm-mm-mm, that's looking perfect. We can get all of that in there now. That cheese is gonna melt. Give us a great carbonara sauce. Just wanna gently stir this. Again, we don't wanna scramble anything. That's not our goal here. Our goal is just to make a nice sauce, a thickened sauce. And once we get it heated through, we're just going to add that parsley we talked about earlier. Just a little bit of it. And then we're going to save the rest for garnish at the end. All right, so we've got our sauce heated all the way through. We've got a nice little steam come here. We're going to turn off the heat, okay? And move this out of my way while I chop up some parsley. some flat leaf parsley here. Just 
going to do a real rough chop. I actually kind of like it kind of large in this. That's why we use the flat leaf instead of the curly leaf. Okay. So that's going to go in. And because our sauce is nice and hot, we're going to put in some more of the Parmesan cheese. Bring this back in here now, Joyce, so you can see what we're doing. So we're going to put in some more of that Parmesan cheese, and we're going to stir that around. Another cup and a half. And we're going to stir that around, and it will melt the rest of that cheese and make this a wonderfully cheesy sauce. All right, we're going to let this finish melting up. We're cooking our pasta. As soon as that's done, we're going to put this on and we're going to plate it and show you what it looks like on the back side. Hey, we want to get now into our side dish that we're making for you. It's stuffed Roma tomatoes. Fantastic, super easy, and it's a great side really for any Italian side dish. Um, Joyce, why don't you share with us what's going in here? All right, we're making enough for 12 because that's what we're serving today. So you're going to need 12 whole Roma tomatoes halved, and each person's going to get a whole tomato, but two halves. One bunch of fresh Italian parsley, one bunch of fresh basil, two to three garlic cloves minced, a cup, cup and a half of ricotta cheese, and you're going to need panko breadcrumbs, some kosher salt, and some olive oil. All right, this is going to be yummy. Well, as we get ready to get started, I want to demonstrate, we've already got all of our tomatoes halved except one, and I want to demo how we're going to seed and juice those. So we have our tomato on, what camera were we on, Joyce? Well, you were on this one okay, until you... Until I moved, okay. <laughs> so that's okay, we'll figure it all out. So I'm on this one, so I just got a, a regular Roma tomato. All right, now we're shooting down, got me? Yep. Okay, so we're just going to cut this in half, and we want to get rid of all of the membrane and seeds and juice in there. In fact, this is usually what most people are, if they have uh, texture issues with tomatoes, it's always because of this, okay? In fact, I, I encourage you to do this even uh, if you're making salsa or pico de gallo or anything like that. I go ahead and juice and seed my tomatoes so we just use just the flesh. And that way, you know, even folks that have a uh, texture issue um, really are okay with it, okay? So what I wanna do, just use your fingers and impeccably clean hands, okay? Those were hard. I did the other ones earlier. You really need to use a spoon. Ah, uh, I can I, get it. I actually use the melon baller, but I don't know where that is right now. That's okay. I have tough fingers and just reach your finger in there and open up all those membranes. I'm going to take this middle one out. Yep. I, want, I want some room for some stuffing in there. Okay. So I took that membrane out. And we're going to do one more. All of that out of there. All right. Okay, so we have all that done. Now I want to uh, sprinkle this with a little bit of kosher salt. That's going to help draw some of that moisture out of there. Okay. And we're going to put these cut side down on a paper towel and let them do their thing. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to need to cut up some herbs. We have this ricotta cheese. We have our parsley. I'm just going to cut some of that off of there. Okay. That's a big bunch of parsley. It's a big bunch of parsley. But these herbs are great in it. I just, you know, I know you think it's going to be too much, but it's really not. It's going to be fantastic. So we just want to mince this. Oh, my bowls are too close. Let's go ahead and mince your parsley. I like to just pull it together in a bunch and then just run my knife through it. So this is getting me some baking racks put together here. Got a couple of stems in there, I'll throw those out. You don't need to have all of those in there, but I do want to finish rinsing up all this parsley. That's going to go into 
probably should have gave you a bigger bowl, huh? Yeah, it's all right. I'll figure it out. We'll make it all work. If it doesn't, I'll just transfer it to a bigger bowl. All right, then we have some basil. Love basil. Man, this is the most aromatic Italian herb that you can have. In fact, we sort of learn at an early age that basil is just one of those Italian flavors. Basil and oregano. You can smell basil and oregano and you think Italian immediately or some kind of an Italian dish. I always say if we can figure out a way to turn this basil into perfume, you ladies can start wearing this. You'd have guys following you all over the place. I'm telling you. All right, that goes in there. Our garlic is going in there. I can pull this out of the way. Let me get rid of my, my board. All right. So our garlic's going in there. I'm going to season it with some salt. Okay. Those two two-finger pinches or about three-quarters of a teaspoon is what I end up putting in there to taste. You salt it as much as you need to. Okay. And so we're just going to dig down in there. See, I'm going to make all that work, Joyce. I'm going to cram it down in there in that ricotta cheese. I can't say ricotta like Johnny does, but ricotta cheese is fantastic. If you can't find it, you could use some really small curd cottage cheese. It's not quite the same, but you could do that. Let's see, we managed to get all that mixed in there, Joyce. I see y'all thought that was way too many herbs, but it really isn't. You need that much. Kind of mix that in. All right. Okay, we have that. Let's kind of clean up some of the mess here a little bit. Get rid of some of these herbs on the table. Okay. So I want to bring these back. Now we're going to turn these all up and get them stuffed. You can see the nice pretty ones in Joy's shoes. Just like on TV, she you did, can tell the ones I did. <laughs> she did a much more thorough job than the chef did. I'm always in a hurry. I don't have time to always do it's that. It's like that on stuff. real TV too. That's true. It's like all the ones that they do in the back. That's true. Uh, I, I admit it. I admit it. So we want to put a nice a heaping amount on there. And I'm just going to get some crammed in there first and make sure that they all get evenly filled and then we'll come back and we'll add some more. All right, we've got all of these filled, kind of mounted them up a little bit with our ricotta mixture. Next, <clears throat> we need to dip them into some panko breadcrumbs. So I just like to put a little bit in the bottom of a plate. I'll add more if I need it. And I love, you can use regular breadcrumbs. You can use herb breadcrumbs if you want. I like panko. I like the crunchiness. It works for me. You plant your little tree and paint your little happy cloud wherever you want. All we're going to do is going to take these, stick them down. Got me, Joyce? I got gotcha. you. There we go. That's what it looks like. Okay. So we're going to get these all dipped. Very simple, lay it down in there, push it down just a little bit. You don't have to smash it, just we're just trying to get it coated. So now we have all of our tomatoes, sort of arrange them here on our cooking sheet. As Joyce said, we have some parchment paper on there and now we just want to drizzle those, a little bit of olive oil. And then that's going into a 400 degree oven for 20 to 30 minutes until they turn nice and golden brown and we take them out and let them cool just a little bit before we serve them. We'll show you what it looks like when we get around to doing our plating. Hey, our Italian meals all put together. What we have is some penne carbonara. We have some stuffed ricotta cheese, Roma tomatoes, some cheesy garlic bread. All I need to do is to finish topping off our penne carbonara, a little bit more parm on top, 
I like mine spicy, so this is an optional thing. A little red pepper flakes and some flat leaf parsley on top just for garnish. There we are. Okay, there's our plate. Penne carbonara, our stuffed tomatoes, cheesy garlic bread. I'm looking forward to getting a bite of this. Give this a try. Mm. Mm. I love that salty nutty flavor of the parm cheese and the little bit of saltiness in that uh, pancetta. Now be careful with these tomatoes when they come out. This is your mom they are, warning. They are they hot. They are hot. And he's going to take a big bite. Mm. Love the crunchiness of the panko with the cheese and a rich tomato flavor. Y'all make this. The recipes are out on our uh, website, patterfamesauces.com. Shoot some great food porn for us. Put it out on our Facebook page, the Pastor's Pantry Facebook page. And be sure and check out this and a whole lot of other recipes out on our new YouTube channel, the Pastor's Pantry Cooking School. Listen, y'all make this soon. Bless cooking to you.